everyone. I have noticed that I have not been um, steadfast in my postings for Radical Acceptance. So I am catching up a little bit and doing chapter 10 this week, which is recognizing our basic goodness, the gateway to forgiving and a loving heart, to a forgiving and loving heart. Hold on one second and I will make sure my children can calm down. Everyone, please be quiet. I'm on live. <laughs> and that's what we're going to say today. Come on, Zebbies. So this is a great chapter. I'm going to again at the end um, post the links to Tara's specific meditations. Um, this actually chapter is one of the most difficult things for me personally. So it's a... It's an interesting one when we're recognizing and it is a great time actually because we're coming up on winter solstice and the celebration of Yule, which is all about kind of letting go of those dark days and having the hope of the brightness of every day being longer and therefore it's like a time of hope. So I feel like this chapter fits very well into the season. And let's see. Uh, I think Tara does a nice job of starting off basically saying that her belief in radical acceptance basically is based on Buddhist philosophy and beliefs. And in Buddhism, we do not, we, uh, I am not Buddhist. She says we, um, meaning that Buddhists don't see people as sinful or evil, that when things occur that are, quote, bad, I guess you would say, they really believe that it's ignorance. And basically, ignorance basically means you're ignoring the truth or the goodness or you're not fully aware. Sorry if there was glitch. I'm going to plug in my phone so that it's not going to lose power. Sorry about that. Ah, hope I didn't make you sick. All right. Um, so I, it starts with that basic philosophy, which is very beautiful. And again, links to past chapters, Zelda, please stop. Um, where we have talked about, it's not about being, um, it's not about being evil or bad per se, right? Um, they, she then goes in and talks a little bit. This is, I just wrote down basic notes about how you really have to be able to see that someone, and we've talked about this in past chapters, is vulnerable and you can look at their vulnerability and suffering and look at them in the light of basic goodness. So you're seeing past the behaviors. I say this with um, a big smile because I talk about this in my parent coaching a lot, right? You look past behaviors. You even look past stories or the roles that these people play in your life. And you realize that those, when you look at the surface things, like the story that you tell or that they tell about themselves, their roles, their behaviors, that that can obscure their true nature, right? And we know that to be true because we've looked at that in past, in the past, when we look at the trance that we ourselves have to get through, right? In this book, she talks about that trance. So... When we do that and we look beyond that, um, we can let go, right, of some of those surface things and really start to have compassion, right? She also mentions that, and this was the hardest part for me, that this truly begins by seeing the good in ourselves and truly having forgiveness and self-compassion. It's very, as I said last 
um, with the last chapter. This is one of the most challenging things I find. Um, she talks about how we gain, <laughs> yes, my dog is apparently missing me. Sit down, puppies. Um, begins truly through forgiveness of yourself, right? And you have to let go and trust in the possibility of goodness. Um, you have to refuse to push others away because if you live in a state where not just self-compassion that we talked about last week, but that you truly are holding on to an unforgiving heart for yourself, what you're doing to yourself is pushing yourself into coping or um, avoidance, which really prohibits you from doing good and being kind and open with others. So it's very deep. I find it to be very true. Um, sorry, I'm looking at all my notes. So she says, you have to trust in the possibility of goodness and refuse to push others out of our hearts, including ourselves, which is basically what I just said. All right. You have to put aside the bad person, quote unquote, right? So if you've told yourself for years and years and years that you're a bad person, um, this leads to shame. And she has a really cool... Um, I guess it's kind of a recount of one of her patients where she says this um, patient couldn't really forgive themselves. They really have been beating themselves up for a long time and that they were saying, I'm going to try not to cry because obviously I can relate to this person. And they were saying, um, you know, I'm such a terrible person. I really can't forgive myself. And she said, can't can you start to forgive yourself? And they said, you know, I really can't. I really don't see how I could ever. And so Tara looked um, beyond that and went to the idea of, well, if you're not forgiving yourself, you're also shaming yourself. So can you at least forgive the shame? Don't forgive yourself, just forgive the shame. All right, so... The person forgives the shame and, you know, over, you know, she was seeing her weekly, so I'm sure it was a week of forgiving shame, forgiving shame. Finally, she started feeling like, I'm not shameful anymore, but now I notice that there's like a fear there. And so forgive the fear. If I forgive the fear, forgive the fear leads to decrease of fear and then really gets to grief. Uh, and then forgives the grief. And by basically forgiving these emotions, right, or these past experiences, you get down to where you start to see that you can forgive yourself. Because all of these things open up different aspects of whatever you're really holding on to and really shaming yourself for. And so strengthening our, rec our, our recognition of basic goodness. Basically, she says, when you open to the pain, you basically allow your heart to be tender and thus awaken your heart for compassion and love. Not just to yourself, but to everyone. So... I love that she also goes to this place, which was forgiveness. So should we choose to forgive ourselves or others? It does not take out the responsibility or take us off the hook for our actions. Our actions are our actions, right? Sorry, my kids are getting very animated. Um, she also says we cannot punish ourselves into being a good person and I would take that a step further if you are one of my clients and one of my parent in my parenting coaching 
I talk about that. You cannot punish someone to be good. That That is just a, you, it's an inability. You cannot do it. So what, what is that? Well, blaming, um, hating ourselves can only lead to harmful actions, right? And when we learn to forgive ourselves and hold on one second, I have to, I have to go tell my children something. Hold on one second. You guys need to be quiet. Daddy's on a call and I'm on a live. Cole, quiet. Please. Thank you. Apparently it's very exciting in this house. And that happens too. <laughs> um, so, where was I? Here. Holding ourselves in compassion of forgiveness basically means that we... Shh, Zelda. Shh. This is a crazy live. I'm sorry. Um, we can experience our goodness and respond basically with mindfulness. She says with wisdom and care. It is a way that you can see the true goodness in yourself and others. So we remember that the feeling of being good, we open up ourselves to help others. We realize really that there is no evil. Hi, Amelia, it's nice to see you. Um, it is for me, very apparent that a gratitude practice could do all of this because, hi Alejandra, oh my gosh, you're so big, we miss you so much. Um, when you do a gratitude practice, you can bring to the surface the feelings of good and what it's like to truly be lovable. So I think that when we talked before about doing a gratitude practice, this is even more so there. So if you're holding on to not forgiving yourself, if you're holding on to things that are causing guilt and shame, um, sometimes that gratitude practice turned on yourself is a great thing. And also seeing yourself through the eyes of another, whether that's a loved one, a pet, uh, or a friend can really help bring about all of that. Forgiveness is deeply liberating. Oh my gosh. Hold on one second. Oh my goodness. That's crazy pants. <laughs> Um, and I think ultimately, I also, from this chapter, really love that she explains in not so many words that we all have a very deep need to be loved wholly, meaning we want to feel seen, we want to feel understood, we want to feel loved not just because of one aspect, but through all of us. And she has some heartwarming stories that go along with that. I'll leave that for the people who read it. Um, in the end, I think there is a lot to do with forgiveness. And she actually focuses on loving kindness uh, meditations, but also does a nice forgiveness meditation. And she goes through like three forgiveness meditations. One focusing on forgiveness from others. And then next, forgiveness of yourself. And then finally, forgiving others. And what I love is that she really wants you to experience these and practice these before doing a loving kindness, which is kind of beautiful because what it does is open up your heart to the goodness. So it's easier to do a loving kindness if you have gone through these. I am going to link 
those meditations um, in the comments section. And next week will be after Christmas, so I may or may not get to do my live on Monday. Um, and I, sorry, I just don't know ahead of time, so I'm not going to commit myself for sure, but hopefully I can do that soon. The book is Radical Acceptance by Tara Brock. My past lives are on my page, but they're e more easily found on my business page because I don't post so much personal stuff. So that's Best Self, Best Health um, on Facebook. And I post all of those lives so you can go through and see them chapter by chapter as she unfolds kind of her philosophy on radical acceptance. So it was fabulous having you on here today. Um, if you have questions, if you have comments, if you want to complain about something or praise something, feel free to put it in the comments. Uh, I will read them and engage with them, answer them anything I can. If I don't see you all, have a fantastic holiday. I'm not sure what you celebrate, but whatever it is, I hope that you feel the merriment and the joy and the peace of this holiday season. And I will see you soon.